Evaluate the expressions answering degrees and radians. Notice all the expressions involve inverse cotangent or arc cotangent, which for review has a domain or input of all real numbers, which are all the possible cotangent function values, and the range or output is from zero to pi radians, not including the endpoints. Which means in standard position, the output or range again will be from zero to pi radians, not including the endpoints. So these open circles indicate the endpoints are not included. Each of these expressions are equal to some angle in this interval. On the unit circle, cotangent theta is equal to y divided by x, and therefore, we will have to determine this quotient using the points on the unit circle in order to evaluate the given expressions. Because we have to find this quotient, evaluating expressions involving inverse cotangent as well as inverse tangent tend to be more challenging than evaluating the other for inverse trig functions. The first expression is inverse cotangent of negative one. This is equal to an angle in this interval that has a cotangent function value of negative one. We should be able to recognize that the quotient x divided by y is equal to negative one when x and y are opposites. So let's try to find the point on the unit circle in this interval where the x and y coordinates are opposites. Notice at this point, x equals negative square root two divided by two, and y is equal to positive square root two divided by two, and therefore x divided by y is going to equal negative one, and therefore cotangent is equal to negative one when the terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle at this point. And we know the initial side is along the positive x-axis, and therefore the angle in this interval that has a cotangent function value of negative one is this angle here, 135 degrees, or 3 fourths pi radians. Next we have inverse cotangent of square root three. Before we evaluate this, notice all the fractional values on the unit circle have a denominator of two. When finding the quotient of two fractions that have a common denominator, we can simply find the quotient of the numerators. Let's quickly show why this works. If we have a over b divided by c over b, where we have a common denominator of b, we can multiply both fractions by b. When we do this, notice how b divided by b simplifies the one here as well as here, leaving us with a simplified fraction of just a over c or a divided by c. And notice a divided by c is just the quotient of the numerators from the original fractions. Again, this only works though when we're dividing fractions with the same denominator, which we do on the unit circle. So to evaluate inverse cotangent of square root three, we are looking for the point on the unit circle in this interval where x divided by y is equal to square root three. But let's focus on the quotient of the numerators. Notice at this point here, if we divide the numerators, x divided by y is square root three divided by one, which is equal to square root three. And therefore, this is the point of the unit circle where x divided by y is equal to square root three. And therefore, the angle we are looking for must have a terminal side intersecting the unit circle at this point. We know the initial side is here, and therefore the angle is 30 degrees, or in radians, pi over six radians, or one sixth pi radians. But let's go ahead and show x divided by y anyway. x divided by y is equal to square root three over two divided by one half. Again, to simplify, we can multiply the top and bottom by two. Simplifying, two divided by two simplifies the one here as well as here, which does give us square root three over one, which is square root three. This verifies the cotangent function value is square root three at the angle of 30 degrees, or one sixth pi radians. Next we have inverse cotangent of zero. Now we're looking for the point on the unit circle in this interval where x divided by y is equal to zero. X divided by y is equal to zero at this point here, where x is zero and y is one. Notice x divided by y is equal to zero divided by one, which is zero. And therefore, this is the terminal side of the angle we are looking for. This is the initial side. And therefore, the expression simplifies to 90 degrees, 
or in radians, pi over 2 radians, or 1 half pi radians. The last expression is inverse cotangent of negative square root 3 divided by 3. In order to recognize the point where x divided by y is equal to this expression, it'll be helpful to rationalize the numerator. So let's go ahead and do that. We have negative square root 3 divided by 3. And now to rationalize the numerator, we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. Notice how this will give us negative 3 divided by 3 square root 3. And then 3 over 3 simplifies to 1, leaving us with negative 1 divided by square root 3. We can rewrite inverse cotangent of negative square root 3 divided by 3 as inverse cotangent of negative 1 divided by square root 3. Again, it's often helpful to change the form of the given function value, or in this case, rationalize the numerator in order to recognize the function value on the unit circle. So now we go back to the unit circle and find a point in the interval where x divided by y is equal to negative 1 divided by square root 3. And again, we can focus on the quotient of the numerators. Notice at this point here, x divided by y is negative 1 divided by square root 3, which is the cotangent function value we are looking for. And therefore, this is the point on the unit circle we are looking for, which means this is the terminal side of the angle. Of course, this is the initial side, and therefore the angle is 120 degrees, or in radians, 2 thirds pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.